Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Kansas City Royals and the Detroit Tigers at Tigers Stadium. On the mound for the Royals today is Dennis Leonard, whose record is 4-4 four four with a 4.98 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Tom Filer, whose record is 1-1 one one with a 5.19 ERA. So we uh, rounded out the uh, road trip with a 4-1 to loss to the Yankees. We went 2-4 and four on this road trip. Not a great performance from our batters as it seems like uh, the entire American League is kind of getting evened out with the uh, batting average and home runs. Uh, we'll take a look at that momentarily. Uh, but the great thing is, is we have a day off and now we head back home to face the Royals. Uh, before we take a look at the Royals uh, team page, uh, we did make a big trade yesterday. Well, a big, that's kind of an exaggeration, right? Because we got rid of Chuck Carey, who technically, uh, we'll take a look here at the transactions from yesterday. We got rid of Chuck Carey to St. Louis for three players. Chuck Carey's a pitcher we're not going to use. He's a left-hander, uh, can't really start, not really much of a reliever, kind of a long reliever. Uh, with a good rating, but really not going to work for us. So we sent him to St. Louis for Terry Kennedy, who is going to be our uh, backup catcher now. He hasn't played in the American uh, in the American League in baseball since 1980. Uh, he doesn't have a, a great arm, but he has a good bat, and he could be a nice backup uh, to Lance Parrish, although Terry Kennedy is high, more highly rated than uh, Lance Parrish right now. We got ourselves a triple-A right-handed relief pitcher, which we probably will use before too long. And we got Mike Paglarulo, who is a uh, future third baseman for us, I would say. So I feel like we did okay in that deal. Where we have a real problem, and I just want to take a moment to illustrate this. Uh, I, noted, <laughs> I, I decided to take a look yesterday. I'm like, oh my gosh, we are in trouble. Look at all the players that we have that are going uh, to arbitration, all these in 1983, or the players that are looking for new contracts next year. We cannot afford all these players. I mean, I have no idea what we're going to do. I actually tried to make a deal with Ricky yesterday, and he's asking $2 million a year for seven years. That would be one-third, approximately one-third of our uh, payroll right now. Uh, so, I mean, that is unbelievable. Eddie Murray, $1.2 million, which we would be a fool to give him that kind of money based on his current ratings. Andre Dawson, he's already as good as gone. And then we have Solars. Okay, who cares? Gibby, Hatcher, our MVP from last season. Our closer, our best lefty, uh, Dave Smith, future closer for us. Keith Comstock, who cares? And... Uh, also, we have uh, Bruce Robbins and Dan Petrie, who's injured right now. We have a lot of key players who are going to go to arbitration. We'll, we'll sign them to a long-term deal. Then we'll have to trade them. We cannot afford to have all these players. The only one that I'm sure that I want is Ricky Henderson, and we can't afford him right now. So I don't know if we let Ricky go to free agency at the end of the year and then try to sign him for less money because because maybe nobody can afford him. I don't know. So we're in a tough spot, um, and I thought I'd share that with you. I When I saw that yesterday, I was like, we we may be able to um, go for it this year, but next year we are going to be in real trouble. So here's the Kansas City Royals team page. They have one injury to a uh, relief pitcher, Mark Huseman. He is currently injured. Top prospects, they have a... The crime dog, Fred McGriff, Andy Stakowitz, and a bunch of expiring contracts, especially on starting pitchers who weren't even in baseball in 1983. Uh, they are one of the better hitting teams in the AL, batting 282 overall. Their pitchers are horrible, as I just mentioned. And you take a look here at their team leaders. Um, we're facing uh, Dennis Leonard today. He's got four wins. Atlee Hamaker is their closer. They have the great Hall of Famer George Brett and, uh, you know, uh, speedster Willie Wilson. So 
Uh, was there anything else I was going to mention? I think that covers it all. Let's go ahead and get started with today's ball game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel, please. Here is Tom Filer. He is coming off a rough outing. He uh, only has one plate appearance against the current Royals lineup, so not, nothing to go on there at all. All of the bullpen is available. We did have a day off yesterday. Here's our lineup today against Dennis Leonard, who's a right-hander. We're going to give uh, Sweet Lou the day off, just a scheduled day off for him. And uh, the rest of the lineup is the same as always. I guess Glenn Wilson's on the bench, and we have Andre Dawson in right field today. Let's take a look at the Kansas City Royals offense. Batting leadoff, playing third base, is Willie Wilson. I'm sorry, playing center field is Willie Wilson. Batting second, playing second base is Dave Chalk. Batting third and DHing is Willie Akins. Batting cleanup, playing third base is Daryl Motley. Batting fifth and catching is Don Slot. Batting sixth in left field is Butch Davis. Batting seventh, playing shortstop is Rance Molinix. Batting eighth, Playing first base is Pete Lacock. And batting ninth in right field is Bob Baylor. Pitching for the Tigers, Tommy Filer. The Defiler. Let's take a look at him here, making his seventh start on the season. One and one with a 5-13 ERA. He's got 13 Ks in 33 innings pitch. He's not a strikeout pitcher. He does give up a lot of hits. Opponents are batting 273 against him this year. His fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour. Overall ground ball percentage is 47. His best pitch is his fastball rated an 84, and he's got a slider that he mixes in. Pretty solid pitch uh, rated an 80. Uh, he's 26 years old. Goals to arbitration next year. He was overall rated an 81, and he's fallen to, an 80, uh, to a 78. So... Uh, he has maybe kind of reached that threshold where maybe his uh, effectiveness will wear off. Take a look at his log. You'll see that his last two starts have not been great. He gave up six runs against the Sulks and then uh, three runs in six innings with four walks against Baltimore. So ineffective in his last two starts. We'll give him another shot today here against the Kansas City Royals. Not a team you want to mess around with. They have good batters. Here's the Tigers' defensive alignment. Uh, we have gold glovers in center field and at first base as Whitaker has the day off. And here is Willie Wilson leading off for the Royals in the Powder Blues. Play ball! Wilson betting 294. The ground ball to second gets past Solars. And the leadoff man is on. Wilson with. A 95 speed. You have to believe he's going to be going. Parrish ready behind the plate. There he goes. He steals second base. Number 16 on the season. And a runner in scoring position just like that. 0-1 count to Dave Chalk. No point in bringing the uh, outfield in. Wilson will score on a base hit no matter what. Chalk. Deep fly ball to center field. Wilson will tag. That's going to bring up Willie Akins. Willie Mays Akins. He's the DH, sometime first baseman. We're going to pull first base in. A ground ball to first will go home. Uh, I, I do first instead of third because he's a left-handed hitter, right? So the ball will be pulled, and that would give him an opportunity to get the runner out at home if Wilson is going. Otherwise, we'll have to let that run score. A pop-up on the infield to short, and Trammell makes the catch. So Filer has a chance to get out of this. Here is the cleanup hitter, Daryl Motley. Now he's in there for George Brett. Um, he's only got 40 at-bats, 10 hits. He is a rookie this year. I don't know much about Motley, but he's got a 1982 Donner's card, so maybe he wasn't even in baseball in 83. Filer throws a low and inside pitch, which he pulls to left, and Gibby makes the catch. 
So Father gets through the first. We go to the bottom half. Here is the Tigers lineup rundown for today's ball game. Batting the leadoff, playing oh, center field is Ricky Henderson. And batting second and DHing today is Greg Brock. Batting third in the left field is Kirk Gibson. And batting cleanup, playing third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting fifth, playing first base is Eddie Murray. Batting sixth in right field is Andre Dawson. Batting seventh, playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting eighth and catching today is Lance Parrish. And batting ninth, playing second base is Guy Solars. Pitching for the Royals today is their ace. It's Dennis Leonard making his ninth start on the season. 4-4 four and four with a 4.98 ERA. 42 Ks in 56 innings pitch. Opponents are batting 273 against him. He's got a couple of complete games. Uh, his fastball now tops out at 87 miles an hour. A ground ball pitcher, 40%. He's got four pitches, but only one is above average. That is his fastball. His slider, I guess, is about average. Rated a 79. He's got a curve and a changeup. Uh, overall rated an 84. And uh, he is under contract until 1985 for the Kansas City Royals. Uh, in 1983, this is a new feature I think I'm going to do for every uh, major opponent uh, who starts the ball game. Dennis Leonard is one of those guys. He went 6-3 with a 371 ERA in real life in 1983. He only had 10 starts, and then he was injured, and he missed all of the 1984 season before coming back in 1985 and making 30 starts, and then uh, he did not last the season in 1986. So he was out of baseball by 86. It kind of makes sense with his uh, free agency coming up in 1985. Here's the defensive alignment for the Royals today. They have one gold glover. That's Rance, that is uh, Rance Mullenix at shortstop. He won the gold glove in 1981. And here's Ricky Henderson leading off against Dennis Leonard. A paltry one for 14 in his career. Taps it back to Leonard. And there is one down. Next up here is Greg Brock. Brock. Line drive into center field, and it's going to be caught by Wilson. Brock had a triple in yesterday's ball game. Two down. That's going to leave it up to Gibby. Gibby's got a big offer in his career against Leonard, and he strikes out swinging a 1 2 3 inning for the uh, Tigers. We go to the top of the second. Here is Don Slot leading off. Good hitting catcher during this period in real life. He batted 300 a couple of times. Almost had a 300 career batting average, in fact, as he grounds out to third, one down. That will bring up Butch Davis, left fielder, batting 246 with two home runs. He pops it up into foul ground on the third base side, two down. That's going to leave it up to Rance Molinix. Mullenix batted 320 last year, one of the top hitters in the American League, and he gets a base hit. Second Royals hit so far today. And that's going to bring up one of my favorite baseball names, Pete Lecoq. Ground ball to second. I have to giggle every time. I, I'm, I'm immature. What am I going to say? I, I, I think it's funny. We go to the bottom of the uh, second inning. Here's... Mickey Hatcher leading off. Hatcher betting 290. Three home runs, and he rips it down the left field line. There's the first Tigers hit. He's going to get a double out of it. I think that is double number seven for Hatcher. It is. Off to a pretty good start on the season, hovering right, you know, right around 300. That's what he does. Okay, so leadoff man in scoring position for Eddie Murray. Murray has been kind of struggling lately. Still batting 315 with seven home runs. We have Murray pull it to the right side. Hoping for a base hit, but we'll take him moving Hatcher over. Kind of like a sacrifice, I guess. 
One down for Dawson. Speaking of sacrifice, you just want to have him hit the ball to the outfield. Anywhere should get the job done. There we go. That'll get it done for sure. Right center field, Hatcher. 90% chance, 82 arm for Baylor. And Hatcher is safe at home. That should have been a gimme, but we'll, we'll take the run any way we can get it. So an RBI for Dawson. It's 1-0 Detroit. Two down. Here's Trammell. Trammell base hit through the right side. Let's get a two-out uh, rally going here. Now Don Slot has an 80 arm, so just average. For Trammell to steal, it would be 70%. And uh, with two down and, and Parrish up, I think we need to send him just to send a message, even if uh, he doesn't make it. Got to give it a shot here. Fastball down the middle, and he is caught stealing. We go to the top of the third inning. Tigers get a run, so they're up one as we head to the top of the third. Here's Bob Baylor, former Detroit Tiger, leading off. He pulls it into left field, and Gibby will track it down. One out. Back to the top of the lineup with Willie Wilson, who had the uh, base hit and the stolen base. And there's another hit into center field. Will that be two? He does leg it out for a double. Wilson's got all that speed. That is his sixth double on the season. Willie Wilson had two home runs last year. That's kind of hard to believe. Okay, so the Royals get another shot here with a runner in scoring position. Now we will pull the outfield in with Dave Chalk up. Again, I think Wilson probably scores on a ground ball. There we go. Ground ball to second. That'll get the, the uh, batter out. Chalk at first. Wilson advances. Tying run 90 feet away. Here is Willie Aikens. Aikens 0 for 1 today. And a number back to Filer. And Filer throws him out. He's throwing all fastballs to the left-hander. That's a risky proposition. We go to the bottom of the third. Tigers maintain the one-run lead. Here's Lance Parrish leading off. He was at the plate when Trammell was thrown out. And he strikes out. That's what Parrish has been doing all season. One down, here's Guy Solars. He's got one hit on the season, and it was a dong. Ground ball to second from Solars. There's two outs. And we're back to the top of the lineup with Ricky Henderson. Henderson goes the other way for a base hit. And we will absolutely be sending Henderson 77% chance. A guy whose fastball is tops out at 87. And a, pit, and a catcher who throws at 80. This should be easy. It is. It has been a long time since Henderson has been thrown out. That's his 24th stolen base. Let's look at his log. Yeah, he it was April 27th. So how many has he had in a row? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. That's got to be a uh, personal record for the sim anyway two down Henderson on second here's Greg Brock and Brock flips it to the left and that should be an easy play for Davis it is we go to the top of the fourth Daryl Motley due up followed by Don Slot and Butch Davis Motley Crushes it 42, uh, no, 22 feet. Filer didn't know how to handle that one. And Motley is safe. We're on an infield single. All right, so we have a runner on first. Nobody out. This is a double play situation with the catcher batting. Ground ball to short. Trammell, that was a hard hit ball. How do they not turn two? That must have been a hit and run. I guess also... Solars playing out of position. That might have been part of the problem there. 
So runner in scoring position, here's Butch Davis. A number, this one back to Fowler. That'll get Motley to third. That was kind of a risky move. And here is a tough out. Rance Mullenix, he's already got a hit today. Uh, there's nothing we can do but go after him. I, I mean, we could walk him, but that would set up another left-hander. Father goes after him. He gets a ground ball to second, and Solars goes to first for out number three. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Filer looking pretty good so far. Leonard's only at 37 pitches as well as Gibby steps in. Gibby goes to left center field. Fly ball caught by Davis. One out. Here's Mickey Hatcher. He doubled his first time up. And he gets a base hit past the first baseman, Lecoq. Runner on first, one out. It's a hit and run situation with Eddie Murray. Need to get this guy off the schneid. Ground ball to second. Out number two. The only play was the first with Hatcher going. He is in scoring position for Dawson. We have not been clutch lately. As Dawson strikes out on a nice curveball. We're headed to the top of the fifth. one nothing Detroit. Only run scored on a sack fly. Pete Lecoq leading off against Tom Filer, and Filer walks the leadoff guy. That is a bad way to go. We're going to bring the third baseman in in case Baylor decides to drop down a bunt. And he walks him too. All right. Well, it's the fifth inning. This is when Filer typically falls apart. we got to pull the outfield in. I, I just don't predict a double play even on the board here as a possibility. But perhaps with a ground ball, we can get Lecoq uh, at home or hold him to third. Fly ball to left field. Gibby's got to hurry to get back on it. He does. Lecoq holds. And now I feel much better about a potential double play. Let's see. Dave Chalk 0 for 2. He's a right-hander. Let's see how this plays out. That's a fly ball to the left center field. That should be deep enough to be caught. It is. And now Lecoq tags up. That's a smart move. I could see that happening with two down. And we have ourselves a lefty. Willie Akins. Gosh, this feels really dangerous. He's batting 320 versus right-handers despite being 0 for 2 today against Filer. I'm going to have to just play it out. And he rips it down the right field line. Lecoq scores. Baylor goes to third. And the game is tied one all. That seemed like a sure double, but I th guess Aikens was satisfied with the RBI. Filer at 83 pitches. Those leadoff walks. They'll jump up and bite you every time. And a base hit. To no, it's a ground ball that Solars gets to. That looked like it was going to get through, but Solars ranges over and steps on second base. So we get the force out. That's out number three. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Royals tie it up. We have Trammell, Parrish, and Solars do up. It's seven, eight, and nine. That's never a good thing. As Trammell strikes out, four Ks for Leonard. Here's Big Wheel, Lance Parrish. Lines out to Wilson in center. And it will be up to Guy Solaris to get something going. Anything. Nope. Number five. Fifth K for Leonard. One, two, three inning. That was a good shutdown inning for Leonard. We go to the top of the sixth. Filers at 87 pitches. We got two righties and a lefty. So we're going to play this by ear. As uh, Filer might be done here pretty quickly. Slot. Flies out to center field. Good job by Ricky Henderson. 
I thought that might drop in. There's one down. Butch Davis up next. Ground ball to travel is short. Out number two. And will that filer pitch to Mullenix? Is that 94 pitches? 99 now. And he walks him. Come on! Now we have to guard the lines. He's got three walks and no strikeouts. Man, this is this is tough. I, I'm, I'm thinking Tom Filer, he might be going to the bullpen and swapping out with um, Brian uh, Kelly. I trust Kelly more, although he does walk quite a few as well. Guard the Lions and Mullenix steals second base. That is gutsy, but that is something I would do, so I can't fault him on that. That's his third stolen base. Now we have to pull the outfield in. Here we go. That's it. All right, Filer. Four walks, no strikeouts, and he was much worse than his uh, overall stat line will show. We're going to bring in Brian Kelly to replace him, and that'll keep him on the same target to start the next uh, time through the rotation. So here's Brian Kelly coming in. Let's take a look at him. He's making his sixth relief appearance. 0-0 with a 4.76 ERA, 4 Ks in five and two thirds innings. Opponents are batting 2.17 against him. 92 mile an hour fastball. Uh, his changeup is his best pitch though. That's rated at 94. His fastball and slider both below average. He's a one pitch pitcher, but that pitch is a great pitch. Um, he is uh, 24 years old. Goes to arbitration 85. You look at his minor league stats. He has been good all through the minors. And I have a good feeling that he will be taking over for Filer after this start today. But more importantly, he's got to get Bob Baylor. Baylor has no power. We're going to pull the outfield in. Here we go. 1-1 one, one count. And a fly ball into left center field. <laughs> Caught by Gibby. And that'll do it. Good job by Kelly. We go to the bottom of the sixth innings, all tied at one. And we're back to the top of the lineup. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Not a lot to uh, go on here. Hatcher is two for two today. And uh, he's got a double in there. Dawson's drove in the only RBI with the sack fly. And uh, Henderson's got a stolen base. We need to string something together here against Dennis Leonard, who's looking pretty sharp today. Henderson popping it up on the infield to lead off the bottom of the six. There's one out. Next up, Greg Brock. Brock walks. Here we go. Brock Ness Monster. Trotting down to first for Gibby. Now, Gibby, not only is he in a colossal slump, but he's 0 for 9 against Leonard. I just feel like he's going to break out. We're not going to hit and run. We're just going to let him take a cut. There we go. He calls the shot. Right field bleachers. A two-run home run for Gibby. And the score is 3-1 to one. Detroit. That is Gibson's fourth home run on the season. Nicely done. Let's hope that's a slump buster. I've had a lot of slump busters in my life. And it feels good just to get it off the chest. Hatcher comes through with a base hit in the center field. Do we go for two? Willie Wilson that has one of the weakest arms in baseball. He only works on his legs, I guess. <laughs> We're going to say no. All right, so Hatcher at first for Murray. And again, this is normally a hit and run situation, but we're going to let Murray just take a cut here. Yeah, we got him against the ropes. Another shot to the jaw. Two run home run. Murray's eighth home run on the season. And it's five to one, Detroit. Take a look at that, folks. Way to get off the Schneid Tigers hitters. Bases are cleared for Dawson. He flies out to right center field. 
two down. Here's Tram. Trammel walks. So Leonard, he has gone off the rails here in the bottom of the sixth. It's too bad. He was humming along. Even Parrish gets in and gets a base hit. They're going to keep him in the ball game. Makes sense. It is V. Solars. If Solars gets a hit, maybe Leonard should retire. 3 1 count. Oh, that was ball four. And he was taking a cut. That'll get you one in the ear hole. 3 1 count after uh, two home runs in the inning, and he's swinging for the fence. That's where the pitch was right there. Okay, we go to the top of the seventh. Tigers get four runs in that inning. A couple of dongs. And uh, we go to the top of the seventh. We're going to let Brian Kelly go another inning here as Willie Wilson leads off. Wilson betting 340 versus righties. Flipping it to left field. Gibson been busy out there. One out. Here's Dave Chalk. Chalk 0 for 3 today. There's a routine ground ball to short. Two down. Here is Willie Mays Aikens. Aikens, one for three. He has the only run knocked in. And he grounds out to first. Good job by Kelly. He wants that starting position in the rotation. It's five to one as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Ricky Henderson leading off. Ricky be a Ricky. There's a walk. We're going to let Brock swing. I know we could send him right here. And we're only up four, so it would be fair to send him. But maybe we'll wait till there's two outs if Brock doesn't come through. A ground ball to third. And an error by the replacement third baseman, Daryl Motley. Everyone's safe. And that's going to do it. I did not realize they brought in a relief pitcher to start off the inning. You probably saw that. Probably yelling at the screen. Raleigh Eastwick's in. He is the setup man for the Royals. He was their closer last year with uh, 27 saves and five blueies. This is his 10th appearance this year. 1-0 with a 289 ERA. Six strikeouts. Uh, a 250 opponent's batting average. His fastball tops out at 87 miles an hour. He's a ground ball pitcher. Sinking fastball. That's his best pitch. Rated in 82. Slider and a change, neither one particularly great. He is a 32-year-old who goes to free agency next year. He was out of baseball by 1983. This was his uh, 1982 Fleer card. I believe he was actually not even in baseball in 82. I think Fleer was the only brand that made a card for Raleigh Eastwick in 82. So uh, he's playing on borrowed time right now. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Here's Gibby. Gibby's feeling it now. He had that two-run home run. Last inning. He goes oppo. Base hit to left. Henderson will score easily. We're going to hold Brock at second. It's 6-1 to one in Detroit. There is a mogling going on right now here in Motown. A Motown mogling base hit for Hatcher to right. Brock will score that time. Gibby goes to third. Seven to one. Detroit. Still nobody out. Let's go, Murray. Here we go. Base hit into right field. Gibby crosses the plate. Hatcher holds it second. Well, 11 Tigers hits today. Nobody out. This will really hurt your ERA. <laughs> As Dawson's up next, and he pops it up. Third baseman Motley camps under it. This time he makes the play. There's one out. Trammell, he's one for two with a walk today. And he strikes out on that slider, 78 mile an hour slider in the dirt. So that's going to leave it up to Lance Parrish here. If the Tigers want to keep this rally going, they're going to have to have Big Wheel keep it moving. And he strikes out again on a slider. 
The damage is done. Tigers have put up seven um, runs in a row here. And it's eight to one. Detroit. Now, we're going to keep Kelly in there. I mean, why not have him finish this ball game off? Again, he's going to be in the uh, rotation, so... May as well let him throw another inning. Daryl Motley had that costly error. Lines to deep right field. Dawson caught it on the warning track. There's one out. Here's the catcher, Don Slott. He's 0 for 3 today. And there's the first strikeout by a Tigers pitcher all day. That is Don Slott swinging and missing. Here's Butch Davis. Davis blooping into the right center field. Is that going to fall in? It will be caught. And a 1-2-3 inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. They're going to keep Eastwick in there. As Solars wants to get in on this 2-2 two -two count. And he strikes out. That's three Ks in a row for Eastwick. A pretty good bounce back. One down, top of the light up, top of the morning to you. As Henderson gets the base hit into center. Yeah, we're going to go for two. 70% chance. Wilson, terrible arm. Ricky gets a double. Nicely done. Everything on the base path has really changed for him. That's his fourth double of the season. Why is he not fully yellow face happy? Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe it's a contract year. How are we going to afford him next year? I don't know. But I guess we worry about that after we win the World Series, right? Okay, they're bringing in a new pitcher. It's Atley Hammaker. Hammaker, this is his uh, ninth appearance. He is their closer this year. 0-0 with an 0-79 ERA. Uh, nine Ks and 11 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 154. Four saves, no blueies. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Uh, slider, that is his best pitch. It is rated an 87. He's got a fastball right around average. Overall rated an 87. If you look at his endurance, it's right there at 50. So, I mean, this guy, he was a starter uh, in real life. And, in fact, in 1983, I believe he won the ERA title for the... Um, Giants. So uh, this was a good season for him in real life. He's only 25 years old. And uh, he goes to arbitration next year. So there's Atlee Hammaker for you. Henderson on second with one out. Greg Brock up. Oh, he's a left-hander. Did not realize that until just now. Good job by Brock just to make contact. He does not hit lefties well. Speaking of not hitting lefties well, here's Gibby. Gibby, who's red hot today, flies out to a left field, and that'll do it. We're going to the ninth inning. This is uh, an 8-1 to one ball game, and it is up to Brian Kelly to wrap this game up. He's going to have to get past a couple lefties, which he's, you know, if he's going to be a starter, he's going to have to do this. Ground ball to short. There's one out. That's going to bring up Pete LeCock. He's got a couple walks today. There's a strikeout. Kelly's showing great control. As number nine hitter Bob Baylor steps in. This is the ball game right here. And it feels single to third. Runner on first. That is the sixth hit for the Royals. Willie Wilson up next. And a wild pitch. Okay, congratulations. Tigers are going to give up one run here. Can't go quietly. That's a deep fly ball to right center field from Wilson. And it will be tracked down as the Tigers win. 8-1. to one. Handshakes, butt slaps, slap and stakes. Nice. We needed that victory to get back to our winning ways. This is a nice road trip. I mean, home trip. We've got uh, the Royals, the Indians, and the Blue Jays. Three not-so-good teams. There is no trade offers, which is good news. Let's take a look at the standings. Tigers get back to their winning ways. The Yankees lose, so we extend our lead to five. Baltimore falls to eight. California 
still leading the West uh, by eight as Oakland has a three-game winning streak. Okay, let's take a look at headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat, the only uh, paper in town, says the Tigers win 8-1. to one. Hatcher had four hits. He'll be the player of the game. He went four for four in Tuesday's win. Uh, yeah, double, two runs, RBI. Ricky went two for four. He had a double and a stolen base. Filer pitched five and two-thirds. He did not get the win, though. It would. It was actually uh, Brian Kelly, I believe, right? Let's take a look at transactions. And only one. Oh, we got a new subscriber. Welcome. It's us again. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Welcome to the channel. And uh, yeah, Mike Jeffcoat of the Indians. He's going to miss 13 days. And he is a single-A pitcher, double-A pitcher anyway, so no worries there. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Tigers win 8-1. to one. Mickey Hatcher, player of the game. I believe he went 4-4. Four for four. Let's double-check that. Yes, 4-4, four for four, two runs scored, an RBI. And he was sandwiched in between home runs from Gibby and Murray. Do you think either one of those deserve it over him? That is a tough, tough call. Um, wow, that is a tough call. Player of the game was Gibby. I mean, the uh, RBI was Gibby for the uh, game winner. You know what? I don't do this often, but I think we're going to change it to give it to Gibby because the game was tied when he hit that two-run home run. So Gibson will get the player of the game. Tom Filer did not pitch well, and he will lose his starting role today uh, to Brian Kelly, who came in went three and a third innings giving up one hit and two Ks to get his first victory on the season. Dennis Leonard had it going on there for five, and then he just gave it up in the sixth. And Raleigh Eastwick threw some gasoline on the fire. Atlee Homaker looked pretty solid. So uh, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with game two of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great night.